Hey there and welcome back to the Code Nichols channel for a brand new video. In this one, I want to take a look together with you at how high the performance cost of throwing exceptions really is. Because we often hear that throwing exception is bad because this comes with a huge performance loss. But nobody ever says exactly, okay, how huge that cost is in performance. So what I want to do in this video is let's use benchmark.net and try to benchmark two methods that kind of like do exactly the same thing. The only difference being that in one method we throw exceptions or we catch exceptions and in the other one we simply don't. So let's get started with this. I have here already a very, very basic setup for a class on which I want to run my, my benchmarks on. And I have here just here a populate list method that kind of like populates a list of string uh, with some new strings. And of course, the thing that I am here careful about is that when I'm populating this, this list, basically each odd number that we have will be uh, or when we'll have an odd number, we'll add this number as null. So in the end, we'll have a list that contains a lot of numbers that are, uh, or the string representations of numbers, but it will also contain null elements. And of course, this would allow us to actually do some stuff here. So let's maybe create a first method here, but not uh, as an attribute. Let's have it uh, public. Uh, let's make it void. And here let's call this without exception and we'll kind of like would want to do something so what we'll want to do is we'll have a for each and we'll say that in uh, for each uh, string in uh, strings i would like to check if the string is null so if string uh, not equals null I would like simply to say here, I, I'll just assign it to a variable var length equals string dot length. And that's basically it. So this is a method in which we actually do not throw exceptions. Let's have another one public void with the exception. And let's do here the following. So we'll have also a for each here. And once again, it's for each string in my strings field, which is a list of strings. Here, what I would like to do, of course, string like this. And uh, yeah, what I want to do here is I would like to use a try catch. And so I will do here in the try, and I will do exactly the same thing that I have done previously so far length equals uh, string dot length that's basically it and here in the catch i don't want to do anything because if i write this exception to the console or if i do anything there might be memory allocated and it might affect actually the test that i'm trying to do here and to understand exactly how slow if uh, the exceptions or if the code with exceptions are uh, or is slower than the one without exception so i guess we should be set up we are doing exactly the same thing now the only thing that we still need to do here is let's say i would like this to be a benchmark so this will be used for benchmarking and the same thing i would like to do here for this one so let's also put a benchmark here and i guess we should be good to go with this one now in the program here the only thing is uh, we need a bench mark runner dot run and I want to run here the generic method and exception benchmark is my class and that should be it. Cool. So I guess we should be set up right now. Everything should be okay. Let's just run the application. We need to run it in release when we use benchmark.net because that's how benchmarking works. So I'll just run the application. And now benchmark.net will do a lot of stuff here. So we'll have to kind of like wait a little bit, but I will be right back when the whole execution finished. Okay, so here we are back and I'm very curious about the results. So let's scroll up a little bit and check it out. Okay, and we see that without exception. So uh, we have here two microseconds and actually with exception, I see that we have here 7000 microseconds which is actually 7 milliseconds and i have to say that's huge so that's 
virtually i don't know maybe uh, three thousand times slower when i throw exceptions than compared to when i don't throw exceptions so that's uh that's huge so that's kind of like a very very huge performance cost actually we can say that uh well uh, when we throw exceptions or when we use this try catch block to to catch exceptions our application is more than three thousand times slower than when we don't do this but what i am also curious to actually take a look at is how or what's the problem or how stand things from the perspective of memory management or or how or how memory is allocated let's just use here a memory diagnoser and we will run this whole thing once again and this time i also want to take a look about how memory gets allocated when we are throwing exceptions and we don't throw exceptions so let's run this application again and we'll be just right back when this whole run of benchmark.net finishes to kind of like take once again a look at the result and we're also back with this one let's uh, let's just scroll up and take a look at what we have here so once again without exception we have once again around two micro microseconds and with exceptions once again we have at uh, around 7k microseconds which is huge so, so the, the difference is really huge but when we look at the allocated memory we see that in the method where we don't throw exceptions actually we don't allocate anything while in the other method we kind of like uh, allocate stuff and the reason why this happens is of course when you are throwing and catching exceptions there are some memory allocations happening but if we don't do this like we have in this method without exception those allocations basically are not here anymore so we have zero allocated memory uh, for this method but for this other one we have some uh, some memory allocated for the exception exceptions themselves so the conclusion i guess is very very clear so when it comes to how impactful actually throwing exception is from the perspective of the performance of our application we can definitely say that throwing exception is way way slower than not throwing exceptions at all and that's something worth considering whenever you write applications and you decide to go for the approach when you actually um, try and catch exceptions and the reason why i say this is because they say okay but yeah seven milliseconds that, that that's not much and that's true but let's think for instance that you might have an azure function running out there now if that azure function runs 10 million times basically a month if it throws exceptions then it consumes a lot more uh compute power or, or or computing time than if we don't throw exceptions so if we would put this on an azure function and run it a lot of times basically we'll see that the difference in cost or this this difference in performance or this lower performance will translate also in a higher cost of operating that specific resource so when we think about this type of performance it's not only about let's say our preferences as a developer but the performance costs that we actually bring into our application in the end they will translate also into a financial cost for the owner of the application so that's once again something worthwhile thinking about and i want want to emphasize that i don't really want to say right now okay don't throw exceptions anymore at all no if you think that you need to throw exceptions because there might be some very very valid reasons to do so we just need to be aware that working or using this try catch block and throwing exceptions translates into a really higher performance cost for the, our application but if that performance cost is okay for us and we don't have or it it, it, did, it doesn't pose any problems then there's really no problem in using that as i always say in my video the most important thing is not to really dogmatically uh, read something or try something out and say this is the only way or this is the best way to go but my idea is always that we have to understand things we have to understand reasons and then when we do this and we find ourselves in certain scenarios then at least we can make some informed decisions and making informed decisions is from my point of view one of the most important talents or skills that a developer and generally a software engineer should possess that's very very important by my book this being said 
Thank you very, very much for watching this video. And if you think this content might be useful also for others, don't be shy and share it in your social networks, with your colleagues, with your peers, wherever you might fee, uh, see fit. And if you have anything to say, if you have any question, or if you just want to get the discussion started, maybe about exceptions or about anything else, just don't be shy and feel free to hit uh, the comment section of this video and just uh, let me know what you think about it. And I'll be more than glad to get into the discussion and have a chat there. This being said, once again, thank you very, very much for watching. And until the next time, I wish you the very best.